From the heartland of America to every nation on Earth, this is Jack Van Empey Presents The Truth in News and Commentary. Here now are Drs. Jack and Rexella Van Empey. Hello and welcome to Jack Van Empey Presents. There is so much going on right now in the world and in the White House that we want to share with you today. And in fact, that's the first thing on my list today that I do want to share, and it's about the president. It's a first, a first. President Trump names the enemy. His pre predecessor would not do that. But thank the Lord, he is not afraid to speak out and say who our enemy really is. We're going to be dis discussing that in just a moment. And then, Christian worship to be replaced with multi-faith assemblies in the British schools. You know, they used to have a wonderful time over in those chapels in the British schools. That's a Christian nation. It was. And now we'll discuss what's happening over there. And again, ISIS warns Europe, we're still here. We are still here. And you know, certainly Jack's relatives in Belgium, uh, they, again, we hear from them all the time saying, we know they're here and that they want to take over. We'll talk about that in just a moment also. But I do want to say thank you, thank you for all the cards again. They're still coming in for Jack's birthday. And so often, as I mentioned, I look in and he's going through the cards, he's reading the letters, his heart so moved. Thank you for writing, for praying, for sending your birthday cards. And uh, he sends his love, as always, to all of you, saying that he really, really misses being on the air for you. And today, we want to welcome back once again, we're so delighted that he could make it again, Dr. David Williams. And as I mentioned last time, he served as pastor of Mount Hope uh, Church in Lansing, Michigan for more than 30 years. In that time, thousands of ministers were trained through the Mount Hope Training Institute. And you know, I can't believe the next thing that I'm going to say to you because they launched 43 new Mount Hope churches in the United States and 300 in West Africa, South Africa, Zimbabwe, and 200 in Asia, and uh, with a combined membership of exceeding 100,000 people. Isn't that wonderful? And Dr. Williams, thank you so much for coming back and being with us. We really oh, appreciate it. Oh, it's my joy, it. Rick Sella. Thanks for having me again. It's an honor to sit in this chair that your husband sits in. Oh, my. Well, he certainly does thank the Lord for you and for your ministry. He really, really does. And we want to get to that first article, friends. I'm very excited about something. You know, you can say all you want to about this new president, that he mouths off sometimes and he, he says something once in a while he shouldn't say, but look at this, up first, Trump names the enemy at address to Congress, radical Islamic terrorism. Now, his predecessors would not utter the words, but President Donald Trump did not hesitate to name the enemy confronting the United States and the rest of the world, radical Islamic terrorism. And you know, I think that we should not be afraid. We should speak out and recognize who our enemy really is. Speak out. Let them know that you know who they are. And I think that's very important. Don't you today, Dr. Williams? I sure do. And the first key to victory is to not just know yourself or know your position. And we as believers in Jesus Christ, Paul said, we are seated positionally in heavenly places with Christ Jesus, far above the principalities and powers of darkness. And so he said, positionally, we are over the devil, spiritual enemy, our anarch enemy. And then secondly, we have to know the enemy. Absolutely. And if we can't name the enemy, how do you get victory over the enemy? Yes. And Jesus, again, we talked about it just a couple weeks ago. He gave the great divide. He said, the thief, that is the enemy, came to steal, kill, and destroy. Wherever they're stealing, killing, and destroying, you know God's not behind that. Jesus said, I've come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. And this spiritual enemy, the devil, he has no new tactics. Here they are, accusation, 
deception, and temptation. And we are not ignorant of his devices, Paul said. Amen. And we need to know our enemy. I couldn't help but think just a moment ago, Dr. Williams, that Jesus had 12 apostles. They named the enemy. Judas. There's his name. We need to recognize what uh, our enemy is trying to do to betray the Lord. That's what Judas tried to do. Well, somebody else who spoke up when he was president, and that was President Ronald Reagan. And I'd like for you to see, he's, of course, our past president. What uh, he's carrying on, the Reagan Ranch Conference is an essential rite of passage for any young conservative. Now, they're carrying on there his reputation. They're speaking up. And, you know, Ronald Reagan, when he was president, was a little bit like President Trump. He would speak up. But where did he take America? Number one in the world. And I believe that, you know, my husband and I were talking just before I came to the studio today. He said, I believe we have another chance here in the United States to become number one in the world. We've got a good president, I think, for that, don't you, Dr. Williams? And I'm so glad he speaks out the way he speaks out. But you know, the prophetic signs are not slowing down. Everything prophetically is still moving forward. And I do believe the United States has been given a reprieve with President Trump, Amen. just like we were with President Reagan. And Rex Ella, didn't you feel when President Reagan would talk that it was your grandpa talking oh, or did. your, your father did. or something? Yes. And I, I know this, that the prophetic stage is moving forward. It seems like, and the headlines are blasting out almost daily. Uh, it sounds like God saying, come now before it's too late. That's right. Absolutely. And you know, one thing that really blessed me when I saw this rite of passage about President Reagan, we do have a wonderful letter from him addressed to Jack saying, Dear Jack, thank you so much because of you, I am what I am today with the Lord. And how good it is to know that he is with the Lord. And I thank the Lord for what he was when he was our president. Well, what will happen, friends, if we don't recognize and don't speak out I'll tell you what will happen, and you're going to see in the next headlines what's happening over in Europe. They're not speaking out. Christian worship to be replaced with multi-faith assemblies in the British schools. Now, they used to have Christian assemblies over there, but not anymore. Going on, teachers suspended for reading the Bible to pupils. Now that's in France. That's a junior high teacher. And then here, this is something. Ism will surpass Christianity as world's largest religion by 2070, the Pew Foundation predicts. Now they say that ism is growing by 73% by the year 2050 and compared with only 35% with the Christian's uh, growth. Oh my, how we need to speak out we need to recognize the enemy and say, no, this is what God wants. And I believe we, we have to recognize them, don't you, Doc? We have to recognize the enemy. We've got to be able to call it for what it is. And in January, uh, an archbishop in Rome by the name of Monsignor Carlos Liberate said something that was very powerful. He said that in 10 years, the entire area of Europe will be Islamic. Yes. And then he said the reason is because of weak Christianity. He said Christians that are not living their faith, speaking their faith, shining their faith. He said in 10 years, this would be the consequences yes. of apostasy and what you talked about just a couple weeks ago about the churches right. in Absolutely. Europe being empty, he said, we've squandered our legacy, our Christian heritage. Amen. But you know, what your husband would always do, Dr. Jack Van yes. Ampey, he'd always go back to the Word of God, back to the Bible. And we can give you six biblical passages that show that Islam will eventually meet its demise. Psalm 83, all the Islamic groups around Israel, 
gone. Isaiah 17, 1, Damascus, gone. Jeremiah 49, Southwest Iran, gone. Second Thessalonians chapter 2, the religion of Islam will be totally incompatible with the religion of the Antichrist who declares himself to be God and even moves his image into the temple. And of course, Revelation 9, around the Euphrates, there are four Islamic nations that are affected by the Euphrates, Iran being a little bit affected, but Iraq, Turkey, and Syria. Uh, there will be an event that we're told about in Revelation 9, around the Euphrates River, that tens of millions will die in that event. And then, of course, the one we talk about all the time uh, that goes way back many years of Dr. Van Empe preaching the coming war with Russia is because of the massive losses in that invasion of Israel, Ezekiel 38 and 39. Oh. Five, six of them will be Absolutely. Gone. I've known uh, I've known Jack Van Empe almost all my life. In fact, I heard him preach at our church for the very first time, and that was his first message that I heard him speak about, the coming war with Russia, speaking about the invasion of Russia and those countries onto Israel. Well, right now, and in fact, we were talking about it again this morning, Jack is not afraid to speak up. He never was. And he recognizes today what's happening out there. I want to put something on the screen right now that he has to say about the goal of ISM. Let's recognize it. Let's see what they want to do. Take a look, please. They have the no-go zones, and the people are frightened to go near it. And my relatives in Belgium say, we're beginning to get it here, and we too are scared. And we're afraid they'll knock on our door one day and says, convert or die. Mm. And that's what they do. Now, Sharia law is what they want to establish next in England. You watch it. It's coming. And they want to establish it in every Western nation, especially the United States of America. And once they do, you don't go around those camps because you may never come out alive again. Why? Sharia law is different from American law. Sharia law says kill. The Ten Commandments say thou shalt not kill. Let's look at that a moment. Right now in our nation, 27 girls are dead because the father, the brother, or the cousin kill them for committing premarital sex. 27, they don't know where they are, and they can't do anything about it because it's their law. Secondly, they kill all homosexuals. You've heard me say it before. I'm going to say it again. You don't get away with same-sex marriage there. You'll be at a grave. They go after gays. Thirdly, they kill all apostates. That's their own. If they disagree with some part of the Quran and they hear about it, that person is put to death. There are all these groups, and Rick Seller, there's so many of them, but two of them have to do with killing one another, and they are the Shiites and the Sunnis. They say over one million are dead just from the last number of months. Why? Because the Shiites say Muhammad is our leader, and the Sunnis say, no, it is some of his family members. And so they kill one another, and it's been going on since the 8th century. My, oh, my, oh, my. I can't get over how God has guided Jack down through the years to know exactly how things were going to uh, be accomplished. And uh, the Word of God is the authority, as Dr. Williams said a moment ago. Well, look what's happening. As Jack said, it's spreading already throughout Europe. They want to take over. That's their goal. Let's recognize it and say it as it is. ISIS warns Europe, we're still here. They published a video message to Belgium warning the European Union state. Experts have noted parallels between the Antwerp video and the video produced by the ones in Turkey. Terror threat. Brits warned to expect indiscriminate attacks on innocent civilians. There they are in Britain. They know what's coming. Beheadings and Islamist stabbings up 11-fold in five years. 
That breaks my heart. Oh, I can't believe it. Beheadings. Government report. It's almost building parallel society. All right. They want to take over, but they're willing to do that for a while. Parallel society in Sweden. Now, you know, friends, I believe that all of Europe should have, and it's not too late. If they recognized it and spoke up, then they could do something about it, but they're not recognizing it as to where they are really, really going because the Islamists want to take over. True, doctor? There, there is a doctrine in Islam that is only second in sacred doctrines to jihad, and that's called hijra. And hijra is resettlement jihad. And they had, the, we, many believe that we're in what's called the third Hijra right now. First was Jerusalem in, uh, in 638 AD, next Constantinople, but they have always wanted to take Rome because they feel that Rome is the last yeah. Christian bastion. And so they're in their third Hijra right now because they want to take over Europe and Western civilization. And Leaders have to wake up to this and understand what's going on in order to protect the citizens because Donald Trump was right about Sweden, yes. turned out. Yes, he was. Sweden has been a peaceful, calm nation until about 10, 20 years of this Islamic migration into Sweden. Absolutely. And, you know, thank the Lord that... At last, I believe that Donald Trump is helping people to see the Islamic terrorism as to what it really is. He's speaking up. He's speaking up, and that is motivating a lot of leaders in Europe that are not in power. Yes. But they're beginning to speak up. Some are even called the little Donald Trump, Donald yes. Trump Jr. Yeah. and all. And that could make a dramatic difference in the days ahead, especially in France's upcoming election. Yes. Oh, how we need to pray for these people who have to live there. As I mentioned, all of Jack's relatives in Belgium. And they recognize what's happening. Well, you know, friends, I want to bring something to your attention that is all important. Let's recognize it. Eternity. Where will we spend eternity? This is our offer of the week. Eternity. Who, where, when, and why? Take a look, please, at the commercial. Eternity. Who, where, when, why is the most astounding biblical video study ever produced by doctors Jack and Rexella Van Epi. Out of hundreds of predictions prophesied, the greatest and final sign is about to happen when Christ returns as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. The event is about to happen, even at the door. Could it occur in 2017 or 18? Be ready. Why? Eternity is forever. Here are seven of the numerous questions answered on this video. One, which of the world's religions is the only one that can get you to heaven? Two, what do most people today believe about heaven and hell? Three, what form did Jesus have before he came to earth, spirit or bodily? Four, what is the rapture and what will happen to our bodies at the time of the rapture? Five, how could the Old Testament saints get to heaven if Christ's blood had not yet been shed. Six, how can we be saved from death, the grave and assured of heaven? Seven, could Jesus return in our generation? Order this all important video today. Oh yes, there's the 800 number and there is the address. You know what, eternity is real. All of us are going out into eternity and most people don't know where they're going. But we can know, we can know because if you put your faith and trust in the Lord Jesus, you can know that when you leave this life, you'll be with him directly into heaven. Absent from the body, present with the Lord. How wonderful it is to know the Lord. So all your questions, so many are answered on here. Please make the call or order right away. Well, let me just say that uh, we recognize another grave threat and that we must be who we were, recognize and expose uh, who we were at the time of President Reagan. Take a look, please, at this next headline. Top Iranian general, world knows the U.S. can't threaten Iran. Are you kidding? 
they would never have said that to Reagan. And then going back, Iran holds naval war games amid rising tensions with the United States. They don't care. We're going to have our war games anyway. Iran is the biggest terrorist in the entire world. Now, who said that? Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. He recognizes he's not afraid to speak up. And then again, U.S. looks to form Arab alliance against Iran. We're trying. The President uh, Trump's administration is reportedly working to create a military alliance with Arab nations, some that will say, we're threatened too. So let's go together. You realize, let's recognize and let's expose and let's do something about what's happening out there. And I'm going to get to something very, very personal in just a moment where I'm going to use that exact same phraseology. But first of all, Dr. Williams, you agree with all of this. And thank you for all the extra information, wonderful, you've given us today. But don't you agree that we need to be like we were during the time of President Reagan? Speak up and do something about it. Well, if we don't speak up and do something about it, What's going to happen to us? It goes back to what uh, Monsignor Carlos Liberate said, that if Christianity becomes so weak, something else is going to take over, just like they took over Constantinople and basically pretty much all the mid Middle East and developed the Ottoman Empire. But this Iran, number one, I don't think the United States has threatened Iran. You know, this general is saying they're threatening yeah. us. And then they're making right. demeaning remarks about our president, True. saying, calling him the newcomer. But what is really interesting to me, Rexella, is the nations that are in the headlines today are the nations that are in the end time Bible prophecy scriptures. Israel, those around Israel, Russia, Iran, and Iran, of course, is ancient Persia, but it yes. included a lot more than the geographical space that it, that it does today. And Iran has been known to be a state sponsor of terrorism. They sponsor Hamas, Hezbollah. They uh, have the U.S. and British intelligence say they have even uh, sponsored uh, weapons to the Taliban and yes. other jihadist groups. Mm -hmm. So we know that Iran is not a good player in this. No, absolutely not. And I'm happy that we recognize that. And I have a question that is the actual headline I want to put on right now. And I'm really, really happy that I think I know the answer to this. Where will Trump go from here? Now, he's had some people who've tried to intimidate him, but he won't be intimidated. And he's going to speak up, and he's going to go the direction that he feels will help America. I think the Lord, one thing that all of us really need to do, we need to not only be grateful that our president is speaking up and going in the direction that he's going, but we need to be praying, don't we? Let's pray for our president. Let's ask God to help him to go in the right, right direction. And it will be in the direction that he's going right now, I believe. Don't you, Dr. Williams? I really do. And it's, it's interesting. You know, uh, Dr. Jeffress said, we, we're not looking for a pastor in chief. We were looking for a commander in chief. Amen. And he doesn't seem to be afraid of anything. And, you know, the interesting thing is, uh, you remember the Titanic. The Titanic had warning after warning after warning, telegraph warning, yes. that they were in dangerous waters and there were icebergs. But they were partying, having fun, and ignored the warnings, and this most beautiful ship was lost. President Trump knows we, America, is a beautiful ship, and we're not going to lose her. Amen. That's a great illustration. I appreciate it. And I want to come to you and ask you a question. Do you recognize your position? Do you recognize that we're all going out into eternity? Do you recognize that we need to make a very, very special decision? The decision to accept Christ as our personal Savior. 
this is why we want to bring you all this information so that you can say, oh my, we're approaching the coming of the Lord. We need to recognize where we are right now. Will you please, in just a moment, as I go to Dr. Williams, pray the prayer of accepting Jesus as Savior. Do you recognize who he is? He's the Son of God. Do you recognize that he died on the cross for you? Do you recognize that he's the Savior of the world, that he can wash away all of your sins? I'm so grateful for the day that I recognized him as my Savior and opened my heart to him. And as we go to Dr. Williams right now, will you open your heart to the Lord? Ask the Lord, come into your heart. Oh, please pray this prayer because he wants to be your Savior. Dr. Williams. It's true, all the headlines are telling us that Jesus is coming. And the question is, are you ready? Matthew 25, Jesus said, they that were ready went in. Pray this with me. If you want to be sure everything is okay between you and God, say, dear Father in heaven, I believe Jesus died for me on the cross. I believe he was raised from the dead and I receive him into my life right now. Thank you, God. I'm saved. I have a new start in life. Amen. Amen and amen. If you pray that prayer, please let me know. There's my address. I'd love to send you this little book of first steps in a new direction. It's so wonderful to recognize the right direction. And Jesus wants to lead you all the way. So, oh, please, right. I'll get this in the mail as soon as I hear from you. And now, eternity, our wonderful offer of the week. Who? Where? When? Why? Why am I going out into eternity and where am I going to go? All answered on here. Here's our announcer to tell you how you can receive it. Chuck? Thank you, Rexella, my friend, to order eternity. Who, where, when, why? Have your credit card ready and call toll-free 24 hours a day, 1-800-JVI-7777. To order by mail in the U.S., send your donation of $24.95 to Jock Vanapie Ministries, Box 7004, Troy, Michigan, 48007. In Canada, send your donation of $24.95 to Jock Vanapie Ministries of Canada, Box 1717, Postal Station A, Windsor, Ontario, NINA6Y1. Now back to Rex Ella. Thank you so very much, Chuck, and I want to encourage you. There's the 800 number. There's the address. Don't put it off. One of our most important videos we've ever done. All your questions answered about eternity, believe me. You know what? You can recognize what's going on out there if you'll really take this thought to your heart. A well-worn Bible is a sign of a well-fed soul. Oh, God bless you. We look forward to being your home again next week. And until then, remember, God cares for you. So do we so very much. Bye-bye.